Welcome to Sputnik, orbiting the world with me, George Galloway. And me, Gayatri. The EU crisis goes on and on. Brexit, anti-EU governments in Hungary and Austria, skeptics in power in Portugal, insurrection and repression in Spain, Greece, sullen and broken. And now Italy. The election of a viable coalition government of the populist left and right may have been scuppered by the president of Italy, who, acting under pressure from the markets and from Brussels, has vetoed the coalition choice of finance minister on the grounds of his hostility to the euro, to German domination of the EU, and all-round euroscepticism. The president's first ploy was to install a former IMF austerity candidate as a technocrat prime minister, followed by new elections. But now both the president and the putative PM may be rowing back. Joining us now to discuss the imbroglio is Federico Gatti, London correspondent of Mediaset, the major Italian broadcaster. Welcome on board the Sputnik. I know this story is developing by the hour, uh, but what are the now likely chances of a deal being reached between the coalition and the president? And kindly give us your take on what the coalition now will look like. Okay, it's uh, hard to say if uh, in the next few hours there will be a government by uh, Five Star Movement and the Northern League. Um, they've been trying for almost uh, three months, 88 days. And uh, they're making a lot of efforts, but not enough uh, to calm and ease, uh, for example, the market turmoils uh, or uh, the public opinion. Now, um, the only way forward would be to put aside uh, uh, Mr. Savon, who has been uh, in uh, the news because of his uh uh, political uh, ideas about uh, uh, Euro uh, and put him not in the um, position that he was supposed to go, uh, the finance minister, but in uh, another position. In this way, they could reach an agreement, Five Star Movement and uh, Northern League, and uh, put forward a list of ministers and the government who that actually could have problems in uh, reaching those uh, structural reforms that Italy must have uh, because uh, the majority in the parliament won't be as good as they thought or uh, as good as uh, Italy needs. Uh, so it will be a kind of caretaker government uh, in the next few months and it, this is exactly what Italy should not hope for. You say it wouldn't be a big enough majority uh, that's true, but if the Five Star Movement and the League uh, are supported by, or at least not opposed by others, they do have a workable parliamentary majority. Theresa May would be very happy to have a majority like that in the British Parliament. Yeah, also because uh, Di Maio, during the campaign, the leader of Five Star Movement, said that uh, he will uh, kind of uh, stay on the side of uh, the Brexiteers and the UK um, because there is a sentiment of anti-EU, uh, both in the UK with Theresa May and uh, the Brexit negotiation, both in Italy with these populist uh, parties. Now, this is a crucial uh, uh, point uh, in this uh, agenda, it's a crucial element because uh, let's say, uh, let's see what happened with Savona. Savona, uh, Mr. Savona, uh, he's a well known uh, te technocrat, uh, he's been uh, in prominent roles um, in Italy for almost 30 years, and uh, as soon as his name came up, uh, as a possible uh, uh, finance minister, the markets in the whole world started to uh, show elements of turmoil. Unbelievable. Because in the past, up until two years ago, he said something like, we should get, as soon as uh, Five Star Movement and the Northern League will have uh, um, government, created a government, uh, a secret uh, meeting with all the ministers in the night and get out of, get out of Euro uh, without saying uh, it to anybody. So he denied this uh, position nowadays, but it was enough to get uh, Brussels and the bigger investors to uh, feel uh, a bit uncomfortable. Uh, the spread uh, went crazy, it went 320 points. Uh, the whole uh, um, market uh, situation uh, was unpredictable and became to put pressure on uh, Mattarella. And that's why Mattarella uh, 
That's the president. The president of Italy, uh, who should guarantee a neutrality position, said, uh, I will save the uh, money in uh, the Italian uh, current account, I will uh, preserve their financial interest, and I will preserve the market position uh, towards Italy, and I will. Uh, uh, excludes, I uh, will put my veto on Mr. Savona. Well, this is the perfect dichotomy, isn't it? Um, you have public opinion and elections on one side and markets on the other. Uh, money talks uh, and presumably the electorate takes second place. Isn't this quintessentially the problem in the EU? And won't the Italian electorate so conclude? Yeah. Exactly. That's, that's the hot topic. That's the crucial point. And it's a philosophical question uh, whether this can be called a democracy yet. Exactly, still. Yeah. So we don't live, uh, according to some or most uh, parts of the Italian uh, public, in a direct democracy, but is uh, a democracy that has been uh, uh, indirect, uh, where the markets play uh, the greater role. And this is uh, the nature of all the anti-EU sentiments that made the uh, Five Star Movement mm. and the Northern League uh, success in these uh, elections on the 4th of March. It's easy to see that democracy in Italy, uh, in Greece, uh, has been uh, put on a side uh, in favour of the markets. Now, um, there is a funny thing about uh, Five Star Movement and Northern League. They, up until uh, two years ago, proposed a referendum uh, against the EU and against the Euro. Now, they had to suppress these ideas in order to get uh, more votes. But if you see at the signs, um, Mr. Savona, an anti-EU uh, expert on economics, uh, if you see the Five Star Movement, uh, T-shirts and slogans up until last year, let's get out of the EU. If you see the Northern League uh, um, programs up until uh, 2013, they all were leading towards uh, let's get out of Euro. Yeah. Because uh, if you see at the data, Euro is not helping the Italian economy. No. If you see uh, the manufacturing basis uh, since the um, arrive of uh, uh, the Euro, uh, it was uh, cut uh, by one-fourth. Um, there are a lot of uh, major companies, Italian companies, that couldn't keep up with the debts and with uh, uh, the uh, implication of uh, the euro and had to be sold, uh, Italcementi and others. Um, so euro didn't help the uh, structural basis of the well, Italian wasn't economy. Wasn't Savona right when he said that the, the euro exist to serve the German economy, not the mm, okay. economies of countries like Italy. Well, it's not up, on, up to me to say if he's right or wrong, but this is exactly the sentiment that the Five Star Movement and <coughs> the Northern League could seize. Um, well, now, how strong can, is that yeah. sentiment? Sorry, mm -hmm. go now, on. According to the latest poll, the 60% of the Italian people uh, doesn't want to get out of Euro, but the 35% think that Europe must be uh, changed in order to uh, have uh, a political and social alliance yeah. uh, that uh, doesn't get um, certain nations to uh, flourish well, and certain nations to be slaves. Well, it's still a majority sentiment that something needs to be changed. Absolutely. Yes, 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 indeed. Overwhelmingly, and not just in Italy. I mean, this is what I uh, began by saying, that this crisis is now becoming all enveloping. Uh, the former socialist countries are revolting against uh, refugee and immigration uh, issues and being propelled to power on them. Uh, great and historic uh, members of the EU, like Italy, are electing politicians, whether they've suppressed or not their uh, true intentions, uh, to electoral majorities, and Britain is leaving. Uh, whatever way you look at it, the EU has a very serious problem on its hands. And that's uh, something that the Brexiteers are looking with a lot of attention. Um, Europe risks to get to an existential crisis now. Um, 
possibly uh, this uh, Italian crisis and the Greek situation uh, will force Europe to rethink about uh, its structure and its identity. Uh, it will have uh, some effects also on the Brexit talks, uh, because maybe Europe will say, maybe we have a big, actually we have a bigger problem now, um, and uh, it will ease uh, the position towards the UK. Or, since what is striking about Europe uh, is that since Brexit, they for once made uh, it possible to uh, become uh, a bloc. United. A <laughs> it's incredible. So probably um, they will uh, uh, lose this position uh, and uh, will, they will not be able to uh, uh, make a stand against the UK. Or in another scenario, they want to punish, they will want to punish the UK even more to uh, discourage other countries to do the same. It's an existential crisis of uh, the EU and markets are playing the biggest role. So it's uh, bound to uh, get to a situation in which uh, all the political classes has either to break it from the EU, either to uh, go with it. Uh, Italy tried with Mr. Savona, with, uh, but they failed, and you can see the effects with the spread, which is the difference between uh, the uh, German bond, uh, the German bonds and Italian bonds were 320 on yeah. uh, Monday. If that number gets to 500 or more, uh, Italy cannot assess the quantitative easing uh, yeah. uh, system, so it's default, you know? So it's, uh, it's very difficult Nothing to... Nothing wrong with a bit of default, in my view. Uh, <laughs> let, me, uh, let me just ask you a final question and uh, a very brief answer, please. If there are new elections, will Five Star and the League win again? Five Star will be still probably the first uh, party, but um, the uh, centre-right coalition will be more than 40% according to the latest poll. So it, will, it, it could happen that the centre-right coalition, which is League, uh, Brothers of Italy and uh, Forza Italia, the Berlusconi's uh, party, will have the mandate to govern and uh, pushing the Five Star Movement to the opposition. Mm. This is the mm. most likely scenario. Wow. And that might be the best scenario for the Five Star uh, Coalition, uh, in my view, but that's a matter for me and not for you. I'm deeply grateful to you for your Thank wisdom you for having me. and your time. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Coming up next, are women saving the world? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Sputnik. Breaking the glass ceiling, the long-awaited breakthrough of women to the top in the professions has been more talked about than realized. Although Britain has a woman head of state and a woman prime minister, only a fool would say that women run Britain. Our guest today is no fool, and that's the last claim that she would make. For her, breaking the glass ceiling is necessary to save the world, so much so that the title of her new book is saving the world. She's Paula Diana, author, entrepreneur, motivational speaker and all-round ceiling breaker. And she's on board the Sputnik. Paula, thanks. It's an amazing uh, book that's already attracting a great deal of interest. You've even got on the back someone from the SAS uh, saying that uh, uh, he uh, couldn't keep his uh, hands off the book. Uh, which came uh, as a bit of a surprise to me because the SAS are not particularly women-friendly. Uh, in what way is this going to save the world if we can break this glass ceiling? It's a big claim. It's a realistic claim because the women will help all of us to create a better world for everyone, not only for women, but for children and for men. This is a time we, we lived for centuries without the talent of women because the patriarchal society literally closed us inside the houses. And look what we have now. We have a culture all based on power or war. We, we don't really have real happiness, even when we have money. We need the values that women cherish the most. We need more compassion, more sharing, more empathy, more love. 
That's why we need women everywhere, at the top and of course in every kind of job. So we need to give them the chance to express their talents. And the world will be a better world for everyone, I'm sure 100%. And this is already happening. So women empowerment is the most disruptive force that we are facing now. More than technology, seriously. We are shaping society and we are changing it. Think about domestic violence. It's a real plague, not only in the UK, but in every country, in Italy, in my native country, in Russia, everywhere. And we are not talking too much, so much about it, and we, our governments are not doing enough in order to stop it. But you know what will help stopping domestic violence? Empowering women. Because a woman, when she's empowered, when she has economically independence, she will stop her husband, her man who is violent, she will say, enough. You know, you get out from this house because I have the money, I have the power to live without you here, you know, beating me and my children. So everything will change. Now many women, they're just scared and they have no money, they don't know what to do. And they stay in these families, you know, with this violent man and they do anything. So that's why we need to help women to get empowered. Also to have a more peaceful society, well, a more balanced that, society. Uh, and I can't forswear to break in now because I could answer you with two words, Margaret Thatcher. I sat in Parliament under the premiership of Margaret Thatcher, who was very definitely a woman but who was as violent, aggressive, rough, uh, uh, disruptive in a very negative way. Uh, so empowering Margaret Thatcher neither liberated women nor men. In fact, it tore British society asunder. I understand what you're saying. In fact, one of the theory of my book is that we don't need only one woman. We need a critical mass of women in politics mm -hmm. because only a critical mass will really change politics. The case of Margaret Thatcher was good for herself, but of course she wasn't a feminist. And as you say, she wasn't really you know, sharing the values uh, that are typical of women. And uh, I can quote here Simone de Beauvoir, and she, she said that uh, it's not enough to born female to be a woman. You need more. To become a real woman, an empowered woman, an enlightened woman, you need culture, you need education, you need to be a feminist. Because being a feminist means dealing and wanting and, and really fighting for equality for everyone, not only for women, but for men as well. So men for can minority. be feminists as well. Exactly. You could be and should be a feminist. I am. Great! My <laughs> wife will tell you that. Uh, uh, John Lennon, in one, one of his great songs, said, you say you want a revolution, but how do you treat your woman back home? Uh, and see? there's a lot of left-wing mm. men that want a revolution. Yeah. And might even agree with you on the, the theoretical level in everything that you've just said, but they don't act like that at home. And that's true in Britain. Might also be true in Italy, is it? Yes, Italy has a very, very difficult situation right now. You know, data says that every three days uh, in Italy, men kill a woman, especially ex-boyfriends, ex-husbands. Yes, it's incredible. It's really incredible. Mm. It's so sad. That's why my next book will be all about femicide and domestic violence, because it's a social emergency. We need to do something. Our governments are not doing enough. And in order to face this kind of emergency, we need to invest more money in education. Because we need to educate these boys since they're little, when they're young. We need to tell them that they have to respect women. We need to explain to them why women's rights are so important. And also we need to help girls to feel empowered mm -hmm. you know, and to feel that more confident because there is a huge cultural bias against women and we are seriously enslaved by this culture. We don't even understand many times that we are enslaved because we, society wants us to be perfect, wants us to be all the time super skinny forever young, all things that are completely unrealistic. And many girls, especially when they are teenagers, they feel that they don't love themselves. They feel that their body is not perfect. So they feel weak and they come become empowered also because of that, because you know, self-love mm. is the beginning, is the most important thing. So you need to be confident in order to become ambitious and then reach whatever you want in life.
that's very important and we need to help our girls especially to become self-confident. Let me ask you about the critical mass point. Uh, again, I sat in Parliament when a huge influx of Labour women MPs came in. They were, they were known rather insultingly as Blair's babes. Uh, there were 105 of them, I think, maybe 101, certainly more than 100. When it came to the Iraq War, 97 Terrible. of them voted for the Iraq War. So I'm having difficulty with your premise that women have less aggressive, less warlike, yeah, well, uh, exactly. less violent uh, uh, values. Mm. And from my point of view, and from my point of view, that men don't have them, which is also worrying. <laughs> mm. and by the way, men kill men every couple of hours in London mm. these days. I know, I know, uh, it's tragic. So murder <laughs> is. Uh, uh, is uh, gender neutral in that respect? Uh, not really. We, we, we come back uh, about this <laughs> after, but let me please uh, explain something regarding what you say to me. So, I understand your point of view, but you're only basing this on your personal experience. Mm. And I respect well, it that. Well, it was yeah. a critical but mass my, of, of women political yeah, but power. Uh, my point of view is a point of view of a, an historian, because I studied history and uh, history of religions, and this is my background. So I see the big picture through centuries. I, I really look at that and in every nation, not only in the UK, of course, not in a short period. And I can promise you that a critical mass of women will change and actually is changing the society. So it's not enough to see 97 women because okay, you also so have to see that the party, they were they were answering to the party and the boss of the party was a man. So always think where is the real power? The real power so is in the hands of the head of the party. Now, I already can see why you're a motivational speaker, and I already know that you're <laughs> a very powerful writer. But you're also an entrepreneur, uh, another pretty male preserve. Tell us about that. Yes. I'm an entrepreneur and a businesswoman, and I started in Italy, the most difficult country to become <laughs> a female entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So I always say, if I succeeded there, I can succeed everywhere in the world. And I actually have clients everywhere in the world, especially in Russia, okay. because I deal with luxe and luxury. So I provide recruitment of high-end house of staff for clients worldwide. I provide headhunting of the most incredible PAs and EAs and secretarial staff again around the world. And uh, I offer through Sigillus, my luxury brand, uh, management, uh, lifestyle management uh, to families and family offices who are coming to London especially and who are traveling the world and they want to do it in style and really enjoy their life. So, so you've already broken the glass ceiling. Yes. Uh, uh, I mean, you're I doing... I destroyed uh, the glass ceiling. You destroyed the uh, glass ceiling. But what about the, uh, the working woman who's watching this, working in a factory, in a shop, uh, in an office, nine till five, if they're lucky? Uh, what's, your, uh, what's your message to them? How did they break their glass ceiling? First of all, believe in yourself. Always, even when people tell you, no, you're not worth it, no, you won't do it, no, you won't reach it, always believe in yourself, you know? Look at yourself in the mirror and say, I will do that, I will win, and then never give up because everyone, even me, we always have our times, you know, mm -hmm. when we feel weak, when the world seems crushing on us. You have to stand still and be stronger than ever. So the more the game is difficult, the more you have to play hard. And, uh, and then just do what you love, have a passion and change. Don't be scared of changes. Never be scared of changing because out there, there might be the occasion of your life. Mm. So. Paola Diana, author, speaker and entrepreneur, thanks for coming. Thank you very much. And now it's your turn to tell us what you think through the portals of social media. What's rattling, Gayatri? So what's going on and what's going to happen in Italy? Fra Hughes says, without concessions to those elected by the Italian people, we will have a destabilized Italy lurching further to the right via populism. Not what anyone wants, I'd imagine. I think it's the wrong definition of populism, but then... I've, I'm governed by Britain's broadcasting rules, so I can't go too deeply into that. So then, are women better leaders? Democracy in the UK now says Indira Gandhi, Benazir Bhutto, Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner, Jacinda Ardern, 
great leaders, not because they're women, but because they have had the compassion to represent their people and the courage to stand by their convictions. Very well put. Couldn't put it better myself and shan't try to. Well, that's all the time we've got for the tweets today, then. Which, alas, means that's the end of the show. But you can stay in touch with us on social media, on Twitter and Instagram, RT underscore Sputnik, or on Facebook, Sputnik on Russia Today. It's goodbye from me, Gayatri. And from me, George Galloway. It's been marvellous.